all of us you know including uh, the cfos controllers including the treasury function the back office function and we as individuals also we invest a lot of money in mutual funds right we invest with generally the broking houses like icici like sher khan like hdfc like kotak have we ever imagined the business model of this brokerage houses and how do they make money and how do they basically account for these mutual funds what we invest with them it's a very interesting fact right i mean take an example of icici securities they have their portfolio now let's talk about indian gap first indian gap the investment accounting was very simple when basically you so what we do is we invest in shares we invest in uh, say portfolios with icici securities and they in turn basically invest a lot of their assets in mutual funds they invest a lot of their assets in say uh, other portfolios debts ncds etc now let's talk about indian gap i mean indian gap as far as the as 13 investment accounting is concerned the classification of any investment was being done into short term and long term now what is short term short term is something which is current right when i invest for the purpose of trading or basically invest for capital appreciation or to earn profits it used to be treated as current or short term investments right now long term investments were all other investments which were typically for you know holding it till maturity and it had all the bonds debentures investment in subsidiaries etc which were typically long term investments so short term investments the accounting treatment was cost or market value whichever is lower which everyone is aware long term investment it was always carried at cost right cost of acquisition now come to indias now suddenly you have seen all these brokerage houses making a lot of money and their net worth getting favorably affected on the date of transition why have you ever pondered upon this fact the logic is very simple all of them have started adopting indias 109 now what does indias 109 say it says that logically all the mutual funds and all the equity investments whatever you have the classification of the entire set of financial assets is going to be into three buckets something known as fetpl which is fair value to profit and loss feoci which is fair value to other components of income third is a amortized cost now amortized cost is altogether a different concept it is basically done based on effective interest rate method blah 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 but that is basically carried at cost it is similar to long term okay let's talk about mutual fund investments now indian gap icic securities were basically disclosing investments at cost or market value whichever is lower so unless a particular portfolio of mutual funds will have losses icic securities will never account for mark to market agree thumbs up okay let's go to the indes indes says all the securities all the mutual funds have to be taken as fetpl that is fair value to profit or loss naturally because the objective of this is to earn capital appreciation okay and it makes a lot of business sense i always tell everyone every accounting transaction has got a commercial substance so ifrs and indes makes a lot of commercial logic right that's why icici securities will account for all its mutual funds at mark to market which means if a mutual fund is performing better and it is above the cost you will also account for the gains in the pnl this has favorably impacted icic securities and for that matter all the other brokerage houses like sgfc sher khan zigoda as well now icic securities the net worth has gone up by 29 million in fi 20 and 21 respectively on account of this mark to market impacts which means effectively they have started accounting all the upsides also in the mutual funds what they have invested as a part of portfolio in the markets and they are going to account for it in the pnl from their side tax implication of this is very simple tax department will disregard the mark to market impact and they will say you have to pay basically tax on the dividend what you receive and the dividend what you reinvest but the fair value will probably be ignored from an icds perspective because the tax department will follow icds this concept of evaluating various aspects of the business including tax including rbi including fema okay because there will be some cross border investments on as well for which the accounting treatments are different from an india's perspective